We're blessed to be a blessing. A life to make a difference. There's hope for my brother, hope for my sister. Life more abundantly. Hello, family. This is E. Dewey Smith. I want to welcome you to another segment of the Living Hope Broadcast, an outreach ministry of the House of Hope Atlanta. I'm so excited that you've tuned into our service on today. I pray that this broadcast is a blessing to you and your entire family and community. And by the way, if you're ever in the Metro Atlanta community, please feel free to stop and worship with us at the House of Hope. We're located about 15 minutes from downtown Atlanta on the east side, and our worship celebrations are held every Sunday morning at 7.30 and 10.15. And of course, each Wednesday at 12 noon, we have a lunchtime with the Lord Bible study and then a 7 p.m. evening Bible study. Come by and worship with us. Fellowship with us. I love the person to meet and greet you. Or you call a friend, call a relative, call a neighbor, and let them know that Living Hope is on the airwaves. We are presenting a practical word to a perilous world. I want you to know that's some good news today. Get your Bibles and be blessed by this wonderful, wonderful teaching that's transformative. God bless you. James chapter 1 verse 19, when you have it, say, I got it, I got it. Now, what I want you to do, if you don't mind, I'm going to be reading from the Message Bible just to establish this subject. It's a little more contemporary, and I uh, just like the way it's worded. I try to use about six or seven different translations in my study and my preparation, and depending on the language or uh, the scholarship or the etymology of a particular text, I vary which translation I use based upon that particular message. But this one here, I think is going to be a blessing to you. You got James 1.19? Listen to what it says. Post this at all the intersections. Dear friends, lead with your ears. You see that? Follow up with your tongue. And let anger straggle alone in the rear. God's righteousness doesn't grow from human anger. So throw all spoiled virtue and cancerous evil in the garbage. In simple humility, let our gardener, God, landscape you with the word, making a salvation garden of your life. Go back to what it says in verse 19. Post this. Put this on your intersection. Yeah, why don't you put this on Facebook? Put this on your Twitter. Put this on your refrigerator. Leave with your ears. Follow up with your tongue and let anger straggle along in the rear. I just want to talk this morning, simple that thought, can we talk? You may be seated. Can we? Can we? To look at your name and say, can we talk? Can we talk? Can we talk? When we talk about human communication, uh, that deals with anyone who we're matched with, anyone who we're paired with. Anyone who we are joined together with, anyone who comes alongside, that can deal with a companion, that can deal with a child, that can deal with a coworker, that can deal with someone that you just meet arbitrarily in your own endeavors, in your own affairs. At some point in all of our lives, we have to communicate with different people. And yet what I've discovered is many of us don't really understand what communication is. Communication, I've discovered, is one of the leading causes of divorce, even amongst people who know each other. Uh, what I've discovered, it's been said that many men don't know how to properly communicate their feelings. Because many men have been taught to bottle everything up and to suppress what they feel. They don't know how to properly share that without feeling weak. We've also talked about the challenges of communication. It's been said that the average woman has about 30,000 words a day. The average man has about 7,000 words a day. And by the time you both get home from work, she's still got 15,000 words left. And all 7,000 years have been utilized. And while that may be funny, it, it presents some challenges in terms of how we communicate and the inability to do that. I want to share here that the challenge with communication is what happens when we have an opposite viewpoint of the context. What happens when there is a communication, but people can't see things eye to eye? Have you ever wondered, how is it that two people can see the same situation and yet can see and experience the same situation and come away with two totally different perspectives? 
that they will fight and hold on to their grave. How can you witness and see the same thing and yet come away with two different perspectives? It's based on the lenses through which you're looking. And also it's based on the spirit in which it is given or received. There are a few things that lead to unhealthy conversations, particularly as we talk to God, we know that God wants us to talk to him. As a matter of fact, in the book of Hebrews, the writer said we can come bold before the throne of grace, obtain mercy and find grace to help us in time of need. Even God said in 2 Corinthians 7, 14, if my people, which are called by my name, shall love themselves and pray. So God wants us to pray. Jesus said, ask it shall be given. James said the prayer that the righteous avail much. So we know that God loves it when we communicate. Luke 18, 1, the Bible says the man will always pray. So God is always, God says, draw nigh to me, I'll draw nigh to you. God is always open, always listening. God loves it when we communicate with him. But the challenge is when we're trying to communicate with each other, the people with whom we are related or come into contact don't always have the same aspects or attributes that God does. While God is open and while we know the character of God, God is merciful, God is observant, God is gracious, God is compassionate, God is kind, God is truth, God is revelatory. We know all these attributes of God, and so it should make it easier for us to talk to God because we know how God is. We know God appreciates it. We know God doesn't get tired of us praying. We know God doesn't get tired of us coming into God's presence. But when we deal with human beings, it's important to know that you can run into communication problems. Why? Because people aren't God. Matter of fact, you aren't God. I am not God. And sometimes people are the problem. Sometimes I'm the problem. And here's why we can be the problem in relationships. And I want to get to the text to help us establish it. It's because when you communicate with people, there are different types of people that you will communicate with. One person that you communicate with, or one person you come, in con 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 come into contact with, is the judgmental attitude person. This is the person who's always placing the blame and condemning the other. This is the one who always uses guilt trips as a part of manipulating the conversation. They say things like, it's all your fault. Or you always do this. Or you never do that, or you should be ashamed of yourself, or you're the reason why I did this. It was your action that caused me to do this. And so you, you, you caused this because you should do better, and then things would get better if you do better. You know anybody like that? Now, if I say one of the things that hit you and you sit next to your bull, your bay don't say nothing, keep looking straight ahead. The other person you're coming to contact with, I want to call that person the professor. The professor is the person who acts superior, always putting down the other man. They always have to teach the other one how to do something. They always, they, 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 they have a tendency to talk down to other people with a condescending viewpoint. They, they're always instructing, like the kindergarten teacher with her four, four-year-olds. Always have to make sure that they put the other one in place. You know that one who says, Pastor, that was a, that was a powerful message. He really needed that message today. That is the professor that we run into in terms of our mate. Then there's another one who's called the psychologist. This is the one who tells the other why they do what they do. They tell them what they do and why they do it. They always analyze the other person's activities, conversations, and motives, and they want to tell the motives of what the other mate is doing as if they know what's behind every thought or word of the other individual. Rather than take what, that, what a person said on face value, they want to tell them what they were thinking when they said it. And what type of sociological dysfunctions triggered that specific response out of that individual. So they listen not with, an, with the concept to really communicate, but to help analyze and psychoanalyze the other to tell them what's wrong with them. They are, they want to put you on the couch every time you come to communication. I know somebody like that in this room. Here's another one. This person is called the historian. The historian is the one who's always contradicting what the other one says. 
They always bring up the past. As a matter of fact, even when one person is telling a story, the historian is the one who always got to correct them. If one person says, you know, it was a Saturday in April. No, it wasn't a Saturday in April. It was a Thursday in May. Rather than let the person tell the story, the historian is the one who always brings up the past, always correcting the other ones, always bring up, always the I remember when. The historian is the one who rarely lets things go. Even if you've moved on from a bad spot in the relationship, the historian is the one who as soon as trouble rises, goes back to pick up something that was supposed to have been buried, you, stuff you've forgotten about. I wish I had a witness. The, the historian is the one who can remember when you waste something on her skirt at the prom in 1986 at Washington High School. It's the one who always brings up stuff from the past that's negative in nature. There's another person we run in contact with. This person's called the dictator. This is the one who uses verbal force, places the man who tells the other one what they're going to do. Some even use physical force. If you do this, then I'm going to do it. You better not do this. Do it again and see what happens. This is the one who talks to grown people in that type of language to let them know what's going to happen. This is the lady who has learned to, to, to put her husband on punishment. Uh huh. And dictates every situation based on what happens uh, when it's time for the husband to receive some good evening. It's 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 manipulative. In order to get what they want, they place the man's to tell the other what we're going to do, how we're going to do. The other one, the sixth one, is the comparer. The comparer is the one who's always making comparisons. My other friend wouldn't do this. Uh, you don't do this. Well, I, my, my first girlfriend didn't handle things like this. Uh, this is the one who says, this is the man who says, you don't, break, you don't make biscuits like my mom. And then the wife responds, and you don't bring home the dough like my dad. Y'all not going to help me fix this this month. Y'all making me work real hard this month. This, this, this is the comparer. It, 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 it's, it's always something difficult going on. And the other one I want to call the conversation finisher. And this is one of the worst ones to me. This is the ones, you ever met people that when you're trying to talk, that rather than let you say what you're going to say, they try to finish the conversation. They try to finish your thought. You be having a conversation in mid-sentence, and before you can get out, their mouth already moving. Shut up and let me finish saying. Does anybody know anybody who, ha who has any of these attributes on this page? And if any of you know anybody or if any of these attributes fits you, then you qualify to be on the couch, do his homiletical couch this morning here at the 730 service. Because what I want us, uh, uh, us to explain, understand is that we all have different personalities idiosyncrasies, and it's okay. M most of these things we learn in our upbringing. If you came across m many men who had quiet fathers, take on quiet dispositions. Many women who had more demonstrative mothers, they become more demonstrative themselves. People who experienced abuse are more likely to become abusers. Persons who face verbal abuse are more likely to become verbal abusers. It's all a tendency. It's all a part of our makeup, and, and, and sometimes even part of our on upbringing our sociology. The question we really got to ask ourselves is, how do we grow in relationships, particularly in our conversation? James here, the brother, the half-brother of Jesus, in a very practical manner, says something that is interesting. James says to us that as it relates to having conversations, James says something that's very intriguing. He says, if you want to have conversations and really have effective communication, he said, the first thing that you got to do is understand this. You, are, you have to learn how to lead with your ears. Now, it's amazing because we think communication, that it starts with my mouth. James says the best communication doesn't start with your mouth. Rather, it starts with your ears. So, so why does communication start with our ears? I want to say that, that it should start with our ears because communication often 
falls through the cracks because of our inability to properly hear. Because we don't have the ability to listen properly. It's amazing how even when you go to the doctor, I have to go to the doctor for my throat because of preaching, and there's a doctor that I have to go to. It's called the ear, nose, and throat doctor. And you will see it's amazing how the ears are often connected to the mouth and throat. That there's a connection there. That sometimes if a person can't hear, a person can't talk. When people are mute, it's typically because they're deaf. The inability to speak is often a result of the inability to hear. Are you listening to what I'm trying to say? The challenge with that is what happens when, we, when there's nothing wrong with our physical hearing? Every time someone invests, every time someone's a partner with us, they help us to reach other boys and girls, to reclaim them uh, from child sex trafficking. Whenever someone invests in us, they help us to touch the young boy, the young girl uh, who has HIV. They help us to minister to the woman who's been battered, uh, the child who's been battered that has nowhere to go. So they help us to go out and make a difference in the world. Partnering with E. Dewey Smith Ministries connects you to a growing global outreach, touching the lives of the battered, imprisoned, sexually abused, and needy. But by partnering with us, you really become partakers and not just part of the responsibility, but also the blessing. So we're just excited to have persons who want to make a difference for Christ. We're excited about people and transform the world. Impact the world with your partnership with EDS Ministries. Your monthly donation of $25 or more helps to impact the lives of thousands. Join Carpenters at Work. Become a partner with E. Dewey Smith Ministries today. Because of wonderful people like you, People around the world are hearing the word of God. How good it is. A word spoken in due season. I'm going to come back to that. But I want to share it with you because when you go to verse 28, Solomon continues the conversation. He says here, uh, in, in the 28th verse, listen to what he says. The heart of the righteous studieth to answer, but the mouth of the wicked poureth out evil things. Listen, the heart of the righteous studieth to do what? To answer. Meaning that when it's time to have communication, that before I initiate it or before I respond, I've taken time to be attentive to what I have to say or what I have to respond to. I'm going to come back to that in a moment because it's very, very powerful. Because many of us in conversations have not learned the importance of hearing before responding to a matter. You know, years ago when you would go to the drive-thru, you say, I want a, a Whopper Junior Combo with no mayonnaise, extra pickles, extra onions, make meat and fry and a Diet Coke. And you get up there and pay for the money, get your bag and get home or get to your work, and you got a fish sandwich, some onion rings, and a large Dr. Pepper. The problem wasn't that you didn't effectively communicate your order. The problem is because of the system that was on or because of the headsets, they were not able to properly hear your order. So now somebody came with an ingenious idea in a lot of drive throughs that when you go and order it now, they have a screen there. That when you place your order simultaneously or subsequent to you giving your order, they would show on the screen what you said. And then it would ask you, is this what you said you wanted? You can look at it and then make the correction right on the spot. And then when you get to pay for the food to get your money, there's a larger chance that what you order is going to be accurate. Now, you still go to some place and Shanique was going to get it wrong, but, but, but for the most part, when they put the screen up, y'all know I'm telling, you know I'm telling the truth. You get screwed up at the drive through all the time, amen? And so, but, but, the, but the purpose of that, it is to, to not just get the order, but also to communicate back to the one who made the order to make sure it's accurate. Here's what we don't do in, 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 in communication. Sometimes if a person or your mate, or your child, or your sibling, or a co-worker is telling you something. Sometimes you can respond based on what you think you heard. Well, y'all not going to help me preach you. And you got swole up. 
and you get ready to go off of something you think you heard. Oh, what's up? That's not what I said. And now your blood pressure's up. Y'all not, you got veins popping out your neck. Your eyes are red because you responded to something that was not even the context where you had just taken the time. I'm not saying that something don't make you blow up. I'm saying that you got to make sure you hear what's being said, that you're not wasting time. So what you got to have in your mind, put the screen up at Chick-fil-A. So when they say what they say in your mind before you respond, you want to say back to them what you think they said. Oh, boy, God damn it. What you'll find, 50% of the time, it'll minimize stress. Because it showed them that you clearly heard and you would know what to properly respond to and what to fix. Let me tell you another problem with communication that's different now in terms of hearing what you hear. The problem that's affected by that when James says lead with your ear, the problem now is uh, our conversation now has increased 70% by our eyes. Let me tell you another communication barrier that I don't think James thought about. Text messaging. Here's the challenge with text messages. You can read a text message and go straight off by what you read. Do you know why? Here's how you leave with your ear in text messages. Because what happens is, what most of us do, we read emotions into other people's text messages. Okay, y'all never help me. In other words, in other words, they sent the text. We haven't talked to them. But for some reason, we're so supernatural that we know the emotion behind the text when all you see is words. So if you hadn't seen their face, you hadn't heard their tone of voice, how do you get emotion from them from words? Oh, okay. Amen. Y'all pray for the preacher. He's guilty. Amen. Sometimes when I'm making emphasis to the staff, and I, 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 will, I will use exclamation point. I use all caps. I go and staff me, and they be like, Pastor, you hollering at us, you fussing at us. Why are you screaming? That ain't screaming. That's passion. That's excitement. How do you figure I'm screaming and you ain't heard my voice? Now, if you want me to scream, tell me what time to meet you in the staff meeting, and I can show you. I showed, I, I've been screaming for 30 years. I don't have no problem screaming. But we read emotions into what we think people have said because we haven't even heard or led with our ears to understand. And now you're going down a deep end chasing a rabbit, and what that person was intending, you didn't even get it. Sometimes you can respond based on where you are personally at that moment. Oh, God. Here's what happens. Here's why you got to be careful as a parent. When you go home and you had a hard day's work, and your child say, what's for dinner? Wait a minute. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. So you have allowed where you are. The question they asked wasn't disrespectful. Wasn't nothing wrong with that tone of that communication, but because of the posture you were in when you got it. It's World War 12 at the house, and you think they're wrong. Go to your room, don't ask me nothing. Don't eat nothing. Go on a seven-day fast. Because you weren't in the right position. Or because somebody else made you mad, now you bring that into contact with everybody else, and you respond with other people. Why? Because you haven't heard them. You're still listening to what somebody else said. You haven't lit with your ear in terms of that person who's had another conversation. Am I doing all right? Y'all don't, like don't like this sermon. Let, 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 let me give you another one right here in Proverbs. I hope this makes sense. There's another one in Proverbs um, about leading with your ear. Um, let's, let's, let's check this one out. Go to Proverbs 18 and 13. 
This is another good one. This is a very good one. This is good for, for couples too. Here's, here's a powerful one. I'm going to move on because I got three more things to tell you. All right, y'all got Proverbs 18, 13? This is what it says right here. Proverbs 18, 13. He that answereth a matter before he heareth it. It is a folly and a shame unto him. Which means you responded to something that you ain't heard. Solomon says, you foolish and you done shame the whole house. How many of you, be honest, have a problem sometimes when people are talking, you're not listening to see what they're saying. You're listening to defend yourself or to show them what they're saying is wrong. Lift your hand. Lift your hand and tell God thank you. If that is a challenge, what Solomon says here, what James says is you will hurt the chemistry and the peace and the anointing of your house simply because you're leading with your mouth and not leading with your ear. Let's keep going. Number two. So not only if we're going to talk, should we lead with our ears? Number two, learn that your words should be the effect. Learn that your words should be the effect. What do you mean by that, dude? Well, back in the book of James, James, well, I'm just going between James and Proverbs today. We'll, we'll move a little bit, but just James and Proverbs. We're going to look at James as the main passage, the other ones to, to further illustrate the point. Look what James said in James 1. Let your ears, he says, put, post this on all the intersections, dear friends. Now, very simple. Lead with your ears. James 1, 19. Lead with your ears. Then he says, check this out. And once you've led with your ears, now follow up with your tongue. James says, in effect, that's the exact reason God gave you two ears and one mouth. You should spend twice the time hearing and half the time talking. But some of us need to buy Charmin five miles because we always got the diarrhea of the mouth. Do they sell a Pepto-Bismol for the mouth? That's a real good invention. Let's talk about that after the service. So. A Pepto-Bismol for the mouth. Here's what he says, in effect. So once you've, once you've led with your ears, he says, now. Family, I hope you've been blessed by the message. You've got to stop there. I'm certainly out of time, but not out of message. You need to get this entire message right now for you and your family. The information is on the screen for how you can get it. I want you to get it. If you know someone who can benefit from it, come on, get it. Show it into their lives uh, so they can be empowered and encouraged just like you have been. And by the way, I want you to know if you're ever in Atlanta, come by and worship with us. We are a church that ministers to five generations. We have great outreach ministries for our community, uh, domestically and around the world. i got to leave you now. The time is far spent. But as always, remember this. If you will be good to God, then God will be good to you. You've been watching Living Hope. See you next time. We are living hope.